It was a good senior day for the Wisconsin Badgers, rolling up more than 600 yards of offense en route to a 45-24 victory against the Purdue Boilermakers. Jonathan Taylor with 222 rushing yards, including a 51-yard dash to the end zone as the Badgers conclude a perfect home schedule and set up the showdown with Minnesota next Saturday up in Minneapolis. We'll check out some of the highlights from Saturday's game. As I said, it's senior day, but today we'll focus on a freshman nose tackle, Keanu Benton, out of Janesville Craig High School, and we'll have our weekly conversation with head coach Paul Christ. All coming up on today's edition of the Badger Sports Report. That cone is wide to the left. Snap to Crookshank, and he'll pull it, taking the handoff inside the 25, inside the 20. Crookshank to the 10, to the 5, touchdown, Wisconsin! Aaron Crookshank, the Wildcat quarterback, takes it to the end zone. Jonathan Taylor to the left of Cone in the gun. Jack will hand it to Jonathan Taylor across the 50, 45, Taylor to the 40, 35, 30. There he goes, to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, touchdown, Jonathan Taylor, 51 yards. Third and 10, Boilermakers at their own 40. O'Connell back to throw, looking, drifts to his right, firing, tipped up, and almost intercepted, but it falls incomplete, diving for it. Not quite able to get there was Mike, or rather Tyler Johnson, with the 29 of Purdue, second down and seven. Hand off Jonathan Taylor off the right side, the 25, Taylor the 20, 15, 10, five, out of bounds, inside the five of Purdue. Jonathan Taylor slips through the market at the five of the Boilermakers. First down goal to go and another 200 plus yard rushing game for the great Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor coming off the field now. Well, if this is his final home appearance, what an appearance it was. It was something special and you know, especially because you know, you don't know, you don't know you know if you're, you're gonna be here again so I think that's the biggest thing is just being appreciative of that opportunity you know didn't know that that was gonna happen so you know once it was going on you know you kind of start looking around at the fans like wow like, these fans pack this thing in every single Saturday just to watch us see the hard work that we put in and put it on display so you start being really appreciative left side in zone touchdown Wisconsin and Pop Rosen is picked off by Wisconsin all alone Taylor, he's gone. Touchdown, Wisconsin. Ferguson catches at the 40, 35 yard line. Makes a man miss. A big, big win for the Wisconsin Badgers. The Badger Sports Report with Paul Christ is presented by Hy V, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. IV proudly supports the Wisconsin Badgers. And UW Health Sports Medicine, the healthcare team for the Badgers. Learn more at uwsportsmedicine.org. Wisconsin, it's a time for going all the way up and throwing down. It's a time for discovering something cool and gathering somewhere warm. Whether you want to spend winter inside, outside a boat, there's something for everyone in Wisconsin. are the ones who found a way to isolate a single prostate cancer cell hidden amongst a billion healthy blood cells. The ones pioneering advanced genomic testing in order to create personalized treatment protocols. They are the ones you want to talk to when the diagnosis is prostate cancer. They are the physicians and healthcare professionals at UW Health and the Carbone Cancer Center. UW Health, remarkable. 
The Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, the highly recognized mark of distinction in college athletics across all divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow your favorite team's pursuit for excellence in this prestigious annual award through the directorscup.com, USA Today, or L Directors' Cup on Twitter. Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics since 1993. Badgers into the Case IH red zone at the 18-yard line of the Purdue Boilermakers. Cone, play fake, back to throw, looks left, throws left, wide open, Jack Dart, got it! Touchdown, Wisconsin! How about that? They come to their feet here at Camp Randall Stadium. Ball at the left hash mark. He has a rocket of a leg. Let's see if he's good from 62. Snap, spot, kick is good! He hit it from 62 yards at the half. And shotgun snap O'Connell rolls off to his right, looking, pressure, throws deep right side, and it's intercepted at the five-yard line. Eric Burrell comes up with the interception for the Wisconsin Badgers. Oh, a big play for the Badgers' defense. Fire motions from left, comes back the other way, and Kendrick will take the handoff, bending right, 35, prior to the 40, 45, 50, Kendrick, 45, 40, down the sideline, 35, 30, 25 yard line, and finally forced out of bounds by Navon Mosley, inside the 20, they mark at the 18 yard line. I say, I don't think he knows how good he is. You know, I think JT's amazing, probably, not probably, the best back I've seen in person though he's been on my team, just the record he's done, like, the people he's getting mit mentioned with, Adrian Peterson, Hurst Walker, like, those type of men, like, when you think of them, you're thinking of, like, those are great, like, kind of playing the game. When you have someone you're playing with is mentioned in that category with them, it's pretty amazing. It was good for us to just maybe enjoy our last moments with JT and Camp Randall. And I uh, just watching him go off the field and getting all the cheers just gave me chills because such a special player in person. He deserves all the credit he gets. That was just our appreciation for all his hard work, all the good things he's done for this program and for himself, and the accolades that he showed that he's the best back in the country. You can't say so much about him, you know, as a player and a person. You know, he definitely deserved that curtain call. Um, he's made so much history here. Special, you know, he. He just rolling off 200 yard performances. You know, he's a great player, you know, the greatest college running back of all time, you know, without a doubt. And, you know, it's definitely, I guess, you know, great to see him, you know, take it all in if this is his last time. But, you know, that was, that was, that was great to see. Yeah, I don't know why everyone was clapping and stuff. He's got, got one more year left. Um, <laughs> like, he's got, you get four years. I don't know why. No, I'm just kidding. But um, he, he's the GOAT, literally the greatest um, college running back of all time. And um, I'm just, I'm just glad he's on our team. I mean, um, that dude's incredible, and um, he's an even better person. Uh, it was real special, and, you know, just how like you said, next week, I mean, we don't want to have it any other way. Big Ten West on the line, rivalry game, acts. I mean, this is why you come to Wisconsin for these kind of moments, and I'm pretty sure we're going to have a great week of preparation in order to bring our A game. This is where great things happen, where technology and discovery beautifully intertwine with compassion and care where patients with the most serious of conditions come for the most successful of treatments. This is where you'll find some of the brightest minds in medicine, changing people's lives for the better. This is UW Health. And yes, this is where great things happen. UW Health. Remarkable. Winter in Wisconsin? It's a time for going all the way up and throw it down. Is it time for discovering something cool? And gather somewhere warm. Whether you want to spend winter inside, outside a boat, there's something for everyone in Wisconsin. Badgers going back to the Wildcat formation. Snap to Groshek. He'll fake the handoff. Room to the right, to the five. Touchdown, Wisconsin! Garrett Groshek from six yards away, and it's 30 to 17, Wisconsin. Receivers on the left, David Bell on the right. O'Connell back to throw. 
He's under pressure and he gets sacked by Isaiah Loudermilk. Christian Bell also in there. Zach Bond as well. Bell's all fired up. We get some reps in the defense today, and the Wisconsin D comes up with the stop. No takes the shotgun snap, looks to throw, steps up, fires deep, right side, see this, got it! Oh, what a catch! Touchdown, Wisconsin! Jack Cohn to Quintez Cephas. A pro throw and a pro catch as the Badgers lead by 20. Third down and 19. Badgers at their own 26 yard line. Cohn surveys the Purdue defense and they'll keep it on the ground. Groshek has room 30, 35 yards to the 40, 45 yard line. He gets the first down on third and 19. They run it. And they will move the sticks to the 48-yard line of Wisconsin. It's their own 48-yard line. O'Connell takes, gives the horn back, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. And it was Zach Bourne, the fifth-year senior, his final game at Camp Randall, and he makes the play to seal it for the Badgers. Badgers close out the home schedule with a perfect record, a 45-24 win against Purdue on Saturday afternoon and obviously a lot of attention will shift quickly to Minnesota but let's keep the attention on what just occurred uh, undefeated home schedule it's that's something that you know I know the bar here is pretty high but I'm guessing that's kind of hard to do I would imagine these guys get a little chance to appreciate what they've accomplished here at Camp Randall. I hope so and it is it's hard to do and I, I've always felt it's you know, anytime you get a chance to win in conference that's a big deal and to be able to do you know, going to feed it at home, and uh, you know, tonight was a good finish, and didn't feel like when you mentioned the score, it didn't feel like <laughs> that kind of game. But uh, I love the way guys kept playing, and it really offensively, defensively, special teams all had a big part in it, and it was uh, good to get. And you want them to enjoy that one, and then obviously, uh, it won't be long. We'll get going on Minnesota. You know, 606 yards of offense, and as coaches and as players, I know you focus on on fumbles lost and all that, but it seemed like you had a variety of weapons going, including Jack Dunn gets a touchdown catch in the game, but Quintez and the, the jet sweeps, so you found a lot of ways to hurt their defense. Yeah, it really did feel like there was a lot of guys that contributed in uh, different ways, and I thought up front obviously played really well, and, and uh, you know, you take away the the pick that Jack threw on second and one, and I thought he had a lot of really good throws, and, and uh, different guys came up big for us and I think you need that and I think we've had that the last couple of weeks and as we go forward it's going to take everyone but it's uh, we did do a lot of good things and, and move the ball I think we we're pretty good on third down and mm -hmm. had a, a fourth down conversion and, and yet um, you're right you, you don't want to dwell on the on the turnovers but you got to you got to take care of it and uh, if you do that then it's, it's a whole different type of game but you appreciate all that went into it and like I said a lot of guys did have big um, big moments where they contributed. Well, speaking of somebody who had a big moment at the end of the half, Zach Kins, who's been a touchback waiting to happen as your kickoff specialist. <laughs> and then you line up for a 62-yarder. Now, things can go wrong, right? Those longer kicks can be blocked, and they had a guy back looking for maybe a kick six. But, man, that, be, beyond the obvious of three points on the board, what an emotional lift that must have been. Yeah, it was. Didn't carry over much into the second <laughs> half right away. But, you know, it, he's he does obviously he's, has a strong leg. And, and one of the things he does, he does get it up quick. So you weren't as concerned about that. And anytime you've got a, a lot of field to cover for the lineman. But you did feel pretty, you felt like you had a chance and, and needed to take it. And, and you appreciate what the guys did. You know, two big runs and then got a, a short little pass to try to get a little bit closer and, and probably needed all of that. And, it was, it was big, and um, it was fun to see and, and, and what he did, and he's meant so much. And like you said, when you can cover kicks, and, and there was a little bit of a win today, but, you know, where every, I think every one of them was a touchback, that's, uh, that's pretty good now. And then, you know, defensively, I know Purdue caused some problems with what they were able to do yeah. on offense, but in that third quarter, they had a drive going, but it just seems like, especially these last couple of weeks, or three really, there have been big plays made. Eric Burrell getting an interception, and you're able to capitalize on that, and a lot of other players involved too defensively. Yeah, that was big. And, you know, we we're starting to get some pressure on the court, but they did a nice job of getting the ball in our hands. But there's no doubt that the pick by EB, because they were driving, I think we had to stop, and then we got called for the penalty on that drive. And, and so to, to find a way to, to stop them 
when really we'd been struggling stopping them, and we hadn't been even getting them to third downs. And then I thought the offense had a great response, and, and that was a 95-yard mm -hmm. drive. And, and then I think you know some things settled down defensively, and, and really it, the way the game was playing, every stop was going to be big. Jeff Brom has been known as someone who likes to try tricks, right? They run a double pass, a flea flicker. They have the funky formation. Yeah. What's the preparation like there? Because you know he's got a lot of bag of tricks. I don't know how you prepare for all of them though during the course of a week. Yeah, that's that's what puts the stress on the defense, and and yet I think they run them well enough where they're they're not just gimmicky. You know, they they're, they're well thought out and they're executed, and and you're gonna see them. They show up in a lot of different games, and I think he does a heck of a job. And and what the you know we talked about it earlier in the week, mm -hmm. but. What he's doing, I mean, that quarterback played as well in, in many different circumstances. He knew where the ball should be going, and and uh, they did a nice job. He, he's a heck of a football coach, and I think they, I got a lot of respect for their staff. And so, you know, to get get that win against that team, you know, I don't care what everyone else was saying and thinking, it was a big win for us. Hey, you guys had, you know, the Wildcat was a, was a certainly not a small part of the offense. We've seen Garrett Groshek in the role. We're seeing more of Aaron Crookshank. Are, are you seeing, I don't think he's ever lacked confidence, but are you right. seeing more of it with him? Like he, he knows he belongs and, and you know, he's made some plays, especially these last two weeks. Yeah, he has. And, and uh, you know, he's got a, a, you know, that explosiveness that's important to us. And, and, you know, really, I think it's the first time where we've had two different guys doing the, the Wildcat. And, you know, Gross did a heck of a job on the on the touchdown. But Aaron gives you a little bit of something. And, and, and obviously we got... You know, the last one we got to clean up a little bit with the, you know, was, I think JT was thinking, is it mine or is it not? But he's given us a, a number of plays here lately. And, and like we were talking about earlier, offensively, I mean, you need everyone. Mm -hmm. And if we can use everyone and find a role for them, it's, uh, it makes us a better offense. It's, it's always special to see the seniors in their home schedule the way they did. Chris Orr, Zach Bond making some big plays in the last possession. I don't want to forget guys like a Gunnar Roberge. He's on the field yeah. there toward the end of the game. Here's a guy who's just he, every day he's getting after it. it. You know, there's obviously a lot on the line with winning the game and what's ahead next week, but kind of a cool moment to see those guys. Oh, all it, it was awesome. You know, you got uh, Faf next to, to yeah. Gunnar and then, you know, Bradrick Shaw, the way mm -hmm. he finished out the game. And, you know, those are meaningful reps, you know, and, and so – it's not a big class, but you appreciate all that they've done. And, and each guy's got a different journey, different way that they went through this all and even how they came. And it was, uh, those are all really meaningful and you appreciate it. And it was good for them to win their last one. And, you know, I thought Zach Bond did a great job at the beginning of the week, you know, telling the team, don't make this about us. You know, this is, this is the team. And, and so you know, I think it meant a lot, though, to, to make sure we send those who were playing their last game out the right way. And now we get one more opportunity to finish out this regular season. It sounds like Zach kind of speaks for many on the team. Jonathan Taylor is about that. He never really talks about himself. He was excited to talk about your receivers on jet sweeps and able to run the ball and get some things done. Uh, he, his, his numbers speak for, the, speak for himself. It speaks for himself, I should say. But just his ability to, to embrace everybody else who's involved, that's made him a pretty popular guy. Yeah, too. and it's genuine. And I think that's where it's uh, – I think that's why it is – you know, where people respect and appreciate what he's done. And, and I think the best thing about this team is they do care more about each other than themselves. And uh, it helps when your best players are like that. And certainly Zach, JT, you know, Chris Orr is like that. we got a number of guys, you know, and, and it's uh, it's been fun to be around. It's a fun group to be around. You appreciate that. And, and uh, like I said, you want them to enjoy this one and, and finish it out. But uh, certainly we'll all be excited to get going with Minnesota. All right, the Gophers and the Badgers will meet up in Minneapolis, a 2.30 kick on Saturday up at TCF Bank Stadium as a battle for Paul Bunyan's axe and obviously the game to decide the Big Ten West Division Championship. Coach turns in a few minutes with the question of the week. Stick around. There is a boy who likes tractors and trains, a boy whose heart was far too strained. He was sick, you see, with a heart that broke. His heart needed fixing. His family needed hope. Enter our doctors with their newfangled tests. Enter our teams whose care is the best. Healthy and happy, the little boy's back. Playing with tractors and trains on his track. UW Health and the American Family Children's Hospital. Remarkable.
Going from high school football to the Big Ten is a huge leap. It's not like high school and mental and, and the game speed and like having to think faster and faster. When Keanu Benton arrived on campus, teammates learned very quickly that he'd make an impact sooner rather than later. Fall camp, you know, this year, uh, he was getting doubled, you know, kind of threw his hips into it, slinger guy, and almost made the tackle. So, I mean, that's when I knew, like, okay, he can, he can, he can, he can definitely be special. You know, he can make something happen this year. At first, it was kind of tough to see, you know, how he would be, but, you know, he showed flashes, and he should, he's, he's just continued to do that. Much to the surprise of the Janesville Craig graduate, those flashes earned Benton playing time immediately. Keanu Benton. I didn't think like, I would be this far this fast. So like when I was out there playing, like, I just focused on the game. And when I make a tackle, I'm just like, yeah, I'm here for a reason. So it kind of it kind of helps me build up my confidence. In addition to confidence, Benton was also a state runner-up wrestler in high school, which helps him on the field today. Physically, you know, he plays with great leverage. You know, he's a wrestler, so he knows how to use his body, control his body. You can see some of that, you know, he uses people's leverage against him extremely well, so, he, you know, he's, you know, re done really great in all, all, all aspects of the game. Which is great because since starter Bryson Williams got hurt, Benton has had to step up and fill a bigger role, and he's impressed teammates along the way. You know, eat up double teams, but actually split them and make plays, you know, the way that he's ragdolling, you know, some of these senior all line you know, it's, it's, it's been very impressive. The sack! by Keanu Benton. As a true freshman, he, he's you know got that kind of power, so uh, Keanu's definitely uh, something special so far. So far, so good, but Benton isn't satisfied just yet. Benton got him first, Grand finished him off. I have accomplished my goals of playing this year, so I'm gonna make more and more goals for myself. With the Badger Sports Report, I'm Eric Riley. Winter in Wisconsin. It's a time for going all the way up and throwing down. It's a time for discovering something cool and gathering somewhere warm. Whether you want to spend winter inside, outside a boat, there's something for everyone in Wisconsin. The Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, the highly recognized mark of distinction in college athletics across all divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow your favorite team's pursuit for excellence in this prestigious annual award through the directorscup.com, USA Today, or L Directors' Cup on Twitter. Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics since 1993. The Badger Sports Report with Paul Christ is presented by UW Health Sports Medicine, the healthcare team for the Badgers. Learn more at uwsportsmedicine.org. Time for this week's question of the week comes from Mark up in Minneapolis. Coach, we know you play for three trophy games, but is this the one that maybe needs the least explanation, the battle for Paul Bunyan's ax? You know, there's no doubt that, you know, all the games are important. And, uh, and yet I think if you're going to say what's the one true rivalry game, it probably because it's been the most continuously played rivalry game, it's uh, the battle for Paul Bunyan's ax. And uh, I think that like I said, anytime you play against, you know, Iowa, Nebraska, other trophy games, I and mean, those are big games, and, and I'm not minimizing that one bit, but there's no question that if you ask anyone in this program, I think if you say what's the most important rivalry game, uh, it would clearly be this one against Minnesota. All right, then they will renew that rivalry on Saturday afternoon up in Minneapolis at 2.30 kick, the Badgers and the Minnesota Golden Gophers. We'll talk to you after next week's game. Thanks for watching.
They are the ones who found a way to isolate a single prostate cancer cell hidden amongst a billion healthy blood cells. The ones pioneering advanced genomic testing in order to create personalized treatment protocols. They are the ones you want to talk to when the diagnosis is prostate cancer. They are the physicians and healthcare professionals at UW Health and the Carbone Cancer Center. UW Health, remarkable. Progress is an endless challenge. Here at the University of Wisconsin, we're a community of innovators in constant motion. We think on our feet, connect with each other, and hit our stride, pushing past limits. Progress is an endless challenge, but it is only those up to the challenge who change the game.